everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my Recycled Parts for Art.com uh, Recycling Artist Gang project. This is a design team for Jerry Bellini's um, online store that offers vintage and recycled items that you can use in your art. Jerry sent us on the design team some stuff and we are to use it in projects and then share it with you. I found this chalkboard, this little wooden framed chalkboard for very inexpensive at Walmart and I thought it would make a good gift item if I zhuzhed it up a little bit <laughs> and uh, you know of course it's almost Christmas and we all need things to give to people and I thought this would be cute so I decided to do it and then I also am going to use it for my design team project so the first thing that I did was to put tape around the edges to preserve the chalkboard part because I knew I was going to be making a mess and painting and collaging and all that stuff so you know I had to protect that inside section and I just used some scissors to kind of cut a straight line and put that against the corners and then just did it that way. So it worked out pretty well and then I put a piece of paper on the inside just to cover the rest of it up. It's just a paper scrap from when I've printed something for an art journal. I was thinking about putting like a little string with the chalk around, you know, tying a string around chalk and hanging it off it so that you'd have a piece of chalk to write on the chalkboard. But I decided instead to make a little tray um, that you could put the chalk in, like kind of reminiscent of those old time chalkboards that they had in the classroom. I think they all have electronic things. A lot of them do now, but... Um, there was a little tray at the bottom that the chalk rested on and so I thought something like that would be cute especially since this is going to be a very vintagey looking project with the items that Jerry has sent me so I'm just using a piece of leftover packaging this is a really heavy duty one it's uh, was a blister pack from the Spectrum Noir markers so it's a strong piece of cardboard tag board type stuff and I'm scoring it I decided that three quarters of an inch um, all the way around the little box would be the right size so I used a metal ruler and a ball stylus because like I said this is thick thick cardstock um, I needed something that was gonna really score it and make it fold well so first I made a three-sided three-quarter of an inch uh, ditch <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it then now I'm making some little end pieces to glue on the inside so that it will become a box had I been thinking a little bit better I would have left the original piece longer and just used those bits to fold in and tuck and glue but uh, I cut it to the length first it doesn't matter I just made some little end uh, C-shaped pieces that I glued inside uh, the two ends to make a little tray and I knew I was going to be using black gesso to cover this and to cover the wood so I wasn't worried about the fact that it's colorful I glued it together with uh, Aileen's tacky glue and I used some little bulldog clips to clip it together while it was drying um, this this card stock leftover paper stuff has a shiny surface and so it probably wouldn't have been a good idea to score um, the areas that I was gluing together and it would have glued together quicker <laughs> but I just I didn't think of it until later you know you don't think of these things I did think of it think of it later as I glued it onto the the chalkboard you know you can use recycled stuff to decorate anything and there are so many great in particular for me because I'm a person who loves paper there is so much great stuff out there that is paper that is just thrown away and never used again and I like to use it so that's kind of what this project is about I'm sorry that I sound so uh, froggy <laughs> but I'm definitely have a cold and I'm 
catching a cold or something. I don't know. I've been taking vitamin C in Airborne, trying to not catch it, but I don't think I sound particularly good this morning. Also, it's very early. So this is Liquitex Black Gesso, which is a product, obviously, that you use to prepare something to put something else on top of it in most cases. Um, it's it's se gonna seal up this inexpensive wood that's around the edges so that it doesn't absorb a lot of glue and stuff as I start to collage on it. And also, of course, I just wanted to turn it black. So I painted the front side and all around where I had protected the chalkboard from me painting on it. I, w I wanted the chalkboard to look good and then I just went ahead around the back and painted it black as well although I wasn't as careful I didn't protect that back area and so you can see where there's a difference between what that back I guess it's still chalkboard looks like and what the gesso looks like the, the gesso dries very flat and you would think it would be similar to chalkboard paint and in fact you probably could write on it and make it and pretend it's chalkboard paint but um, it's not and it just looks slightly different. I also painted that little tray piece on the sides that I knew we were going to show and also the inside of the of it box tray whatever you want to call it um, with the same black gesso so now it's all a very flat black color. Then I have some uh, reused or saved or recycled postage stamps that Jerry sent me and they are definitely not American postage stamps. <laughs> they have the queen on them <laughs> but there is a lot of different ones in there and I'm just if they have excess from where they've been torn off the envelope or package that they were on then I'm tearing that closer but I'm leaving a nice uh, torn edge rather than cutting around them I think it, it looks better when you're collaging to have a torn edge on things. And they're from all different things. There's some security envelopes they were on. There's a lot of that uh, craft colored envelope. But I think postage stamps are awesome to use in your collages. I do save them. That thing on the left, I don't end up using anything out of there, but that's my little plastic box that I save all the interesting stamps that I get on any packages. Um, I don't usually save the ones that have the American flag just because there's so many of them and they're everywhere and they don't seem as special to me but I do save all the ones that have any type of pictures on them because they're just basically little paintings, little tiny paintings. Um, I think they're great. But these ones that came from Recycled Parts for Art are all the same um, well, there's two. There was two that were different, but all the rest of them are this portrait of a queen, and the they're predominantly kind of a orangey red and blue. That was what most of them were, and then there were some other ones. So I sorted them out, and then I'm kind of laying them out so that I'm using mostly blue and the orangey red ones, and then filling in with there's uh, some that are kind of a gold color. There was a few green ones and um, different, two different colors green and then there was some kind of rust colored ones and uh, burgundy ones and I'm guessing that they're different denominations. I mean some of them had one on them, some of them had two, two on them, some of them had 25 so I'm guessing that just like you know, American postage stamps. They're different amounts that have been paid for them. And I don't know if, if these are old or if they're current. I have no idea. <laughs> but the other thing that I had from RecyclePartsForArt.com is this um, ruler, yardstick, uh, obviously some sort of uh, vintage something. And there's a, she sent me a couple pieces of it. And it happened to be the exact length of that tray and so I thought it would be cool to use that to decorate the front of the tray. Originally I was going to put the stamps on it as well but then it just it was perfect it was the perfect size and it, it's um, 
you know, kind of distressed looking and cool. And the stamps are obviously been used. Some of them, you can see the postmarks across them and they've been torn out and it all seemed like kind of a vintage project. So I decided to use that. So I hot glued that to the front of the tray, which happened off camera because I was zoomed in and didn't realize it. <laughs> so I should have been uh, one click zoomed out and you would have seen more of what was going on. But uh, sorry about that. It's been a while since I videoed because I did go uh, up to the mountains and just took a week off from everything. Uh, the only thing it was it was cold, and that's how come I got this cold. I think because uh, it was cold up there, man. Gosh, December in the mountains, it's cold. Duh! I should have known that. <laughs> it really was though. But I saw my kid and. Um, we went on some scenic drives and saw a lot of nature, trees, animals. Um, we even went to this thing called Barizona, which is a wild animal um, park that you drive through. And then they also have a walkthrough section. We saw the cutest foxes. Oh, they were so cute. They might have been cuter than those hedgehogs that I was drawing the other day. The foxes are cute. I'm going to have to do some fox projects. Adorable little things. So anyway, enough of that. I'm collaging using Liquitex uh, gel formula. And as you can see, my container is empty. <laughs> I need a new container of it. But um, I was using up, trying to use up the last dregs of it to glue down all of these postage stamps. And the reason that I use the gel is because these are double thick. They are, you know, they've got the stamp on there, which is not super heavy paper, but then when you add to it that it's got an envelope, which are usually made out of fairly heavy paper, uh, that needs a heavier glue. So that's the reason that I use the gel formation formulation. Then I went around the edges and glued down I folded them over and glued them down to the outside of the frame so that it's just kind of continuation. And then on the inside of the frame, I used an X-Acto knife and a metal ruler. And you're not going to see it because it somehow got lost, but I just trimmed off the inside edge. Instead of trying to fold them in and glue them to the inside of the frame, I just trimmed them off in a straight line so that all that lapped over edge will be gone the next time you see it, I think. <laughs> so it took a bit to get these things to fold over and stick down. They didn't want to because they're heavy. It's heavy stuff. And it just, I had to really get my hands super gluey, folding and pressing and folding and pressing. So it did take some time to, to finish that up. And I ended up just getting rid of that footage because you don't need to watch that. You understand what I did. So then this is the section where some of the uh, footage got lost. I used these little magnetic buttons and I hot glued them to the back so that this will be able to stick to the front of the refrigerator. And then I also hot glued the tray on. Now that, <clears throat> that, um, ruler thing it tapers off on one side which made the whole composition balance a little bit off because it's short it's thinner on one side than on the other so in order to compensate for the balance I used some of the jute twine that Jerry's packages were wrapped in inside the box she wrapped them in craft paper and jute twine I used some of that to make a little bit of a bow and um, glued that into the upper corner to just uh, balance that offness that there was and that worked fine. Then I have these uh, inexpensive chipboard letters and I painted them the, approximately the same color blue which is cerulean that the blue postage stamps are. It's a little bit darker and then because it's a vintage project I used a emery board to distress them and um, in some cases bring out that the craft color that the chipboard is underneath back out as if they they are old and have been knocked around a bit and then I just peeled off the sticker backs added some 
Aileen's tacky glue and glued them onto the top of the chalkboard. I just used the word notes. Um, my idea is this will be on the refrigerator and say you run out of something, you can just jot it on there with the chalk instead of continuously trying to use a note <clears throat> you know, like a post-it note or something to write down these things because you run out of something obscure like smoked paprika and you're not going to remember the next time you're at the store to buy that. So I just figured it would be good for that. And a cute little gift, inexpensive. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please remember to go to recycledpartsforart.com and see what there is and um, also see all the other projects that the design team has done. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.